Hello everybody and welcome back to MJ Games. I am Michael and today we're going to look at how to make a launched RMC like I have right here when recreating Lightning Rod. And the link to this video of Lightning Rod is in the description below. And I want to show you the basics of how to do this. I also want to discuss some of the mistakes that I made that I would do differently the second time around. And the main one being using the right coaster track to get the most the most accurate coaster type that could look like an RMC coaster train. So as you see here with the lightning rod, I mean it looks like an RMC, it runs like an RMC, but yet we see the Giga coaster train on there. And essentially what I've done is if I click on this Iron Fury coaster, it eliminates it. So essentially that's what's happening there is you build the original coaster with the model that you feel is best, which in this case I did the bar heist, so the Gerslauer thin track, and then you overlay it with the RMC. The issue with this that I will show you in a second is if we look at, let me click on this for a second again. So if we look at the... Um, the initial coaster that's actually running the train. If I want to change out cars, the one that I think the most resembles the RMC is the um, the torque, the launch torque, which I'll show in a second. Here we don't have that option. We've either got the Rage, which has the lap bar. The only other ones here with the lap bar is the the Sprint 500, which I do think that would actually kind of work for what Lightning Rod is themed around. Um, but it just looks a little different on the track, obviously. And then Invincible, and I'm just not a big fan of the look of the Invincible coaster on this RMC because it's, it does not look anything near like an RMC train would. And not that the Rage coaster does, but at least the Rage coaster looks a little bit different. Um, I think would resemble it a little bit more. But that's just my opinion. So what I'm going to do in this tutorial is I'm going to try to cover everything needed, at least everything that I can remember, for creating this model. And I'll kind of use this one as an example too in a couple spots just to show you some of the, some of the complications that might arise. So first off, we need to choose our original coaster type. So like I said, I would choose the Launch Torque. And even though it's got the bar on the bottom, I'll show you how you can combat that in a second. So I'm going to raise the coaster to track to whatever you'd like. And now let's do, um, you know, what, let's add a little bit more on the station. Let's do four cars like that. And make sure, so 39 meters, okay. Um... So if we have it leave the station, and then we have, I'm going to put angle snap on right now. And let's do 33.5. Let's turn the target speed up a little bit. And then now, I don't want to do that one. I want to do this, this kind of tubular track. And then now I'm just going to have it level out here. Turn the banking offset a little bit. I'm just going to create a basic layout. Nothing too crazy. Almost making it like Maverick in a sense. <laughs> um, As I said before, this is just a basic layout, not trying to do anything too too crazy with it, not even trying to make sure it's a great coaster, just trying to at least give us something that we can use as reference. Now one thing I am going to do over here is I'm going to, um, let's see, where are the brakes, magnetic brakes. Then drive tires, and then I'll turn this to Let's do 90 degrees. Let's do block section. We'll do a small piece of track right there. All right. Let's 
so now I'm just going to go through and just roughly smooth this out. Not not going to try to make it perfect or anything, um, because we at least want it to be semi-smooth. And that's the key. You need to make everything smooth. Uh, you know what I also need to do? I need to remove the track supports. That's one thing I forgot to do, is make turn the supports off. And you'll see why, because we don't need these supports showing. All we want is the RMC supports showing. So we turn those off. So now I'm just going through and smoothing this out real quick. This is not my normal smoothing method, just trying to make it. And I don't really care the G-forces on this. I just want to be able to have a good reference idea to show you guys. Okay. Now let's actually test this to see how it looks. And I paused it. What did I turn this on to? Let's see. There we go. Let's start the test again. What happened to my my section there? This is supposed to be must have been when I removed the um, uh, when I removed the supports that somehow changed the what the section type was. So let's turn this to a block section. All right, that should be enough. So now, as you can see, I mean it's not perfect, but it's actually pretty smooth overall just had a couple kind of areas where it was a little bit jerky in terms of kind of side to side um, so now the key is you want it smoothed all out so let's say this is how we're keeping it let me just run let me actually just do one more smoothing pass real quick and I don't know sometimes with white it's hard to see where your cursor's at <laughs> um, as you can see there we go all right that should be good enough all right so now here is where um, we're now going to place the other track. Now the issue is if you don't use the topper track, it's very, very, very tough to hide the um, the coaster, hide the supports or hide the track from the previous coaster inside the RMC. And so let me show you an example of that. So let's say we take the Steel Vengeance coaster, which is um, Steel Vengeance coaster is an iBox track. All right. All right, so here is our RMC. Let's do this. All right, so taking that piece of track, for example, we can see how it's harder to hide the beam or the support from the other coaster tr um, the other coaster model. Now, one thing we could do is if I take this RMC and whatever the track color is, this really dark kind of maroon red, and then let's take the whatever the supports color is. One thing I could do is I could color this red. So all that's red, right? Or I guess this one might need to be brown because this can be underneath the track. Yeah. So now if we look at it this way, it hides it a lot more. So that is definitely an option because that definitely hides the... Um, it hides it a lot more. To me, the easiest one is using the topper track, which is what I used on Lightning Rod. 
or my lightning rod recreation. So as I said, you can do either one. The same, it works with either one. I just think it's a little bit easier using this model. So now, and since we are cheating the game here and cheating the system, like there are gonna be some things that aren't gonna be perfect and we're just gonna have to put up with that. Like I think if, if I remember correctly, because I kind of worked on this last night a little bit just to make sure that everything was gonna work out properly before filming the video. Um, let's go here, let's take the catwalk off for a second. Actually, we'll put, yeah, we'll take the catwalk off for a second. Um, so let's start with that piece. Now let's do catwalk on. Catwalk off. All right, so let's, let's stop right there for a second. Now, same thing here. As you can see, that bar below, and you'll definitely be able to see it on these other parts over here, it gets hidden kind of in between the supports, especially if it's colored the same as the supports. That's what's important. So now I'm going to delete this. I'm going to delete that. So now, at this point, I've got my iron fury track going through now the tricky thing here too that i'll touch on more in a second is it is really tough to to deal with this when to do anything with the station when you've got this track in the middle of it and i'll touch on that in a second kind of once we um, work on this a little bit more so now i just gotta go through and i actually overlay the track and also depending on the direction that you go is the <laughs> is the direction that the um uh, that the wow, well, I'm blanking now. That the the catwalk's going to be on. So we can't work backwards on this catwalk here if we want the catwalk on the same side. We're going to have to get to this part and then kind of add that in. So now, you know, we want to hide it as best as possible. As you can see, Wait, what? Oh, I was only on 22. There we go. I think that's, yep. And as long as you get it straight to begin with, you're gonna be able to kind of map the same kind of direction that the overall coaster is going. So for me, I need to, now I did smooth this part out. So this part might not be as perfect. Um, and it just kind of takes some working with it. So this is where this is where I might turn the angle snap off to try to work with it just a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty good. And the key to the reason why I'm doing this is because I don't want um, I want to make sure that I'm having as m the track as close to the as close to the other track as possible because the train will actually be more bumpy if this track's elevated more, and that's one thing that I've noticed as well, which is kind of interesting to me how it kind of recognizes that there's something else on the track there. So now let's take the catwalk off. And this is a tedious process here. Like it's, there's no way to avoid this step of it. Um, and I'm not gonna go through the whole coaster with you. I'm just gonna kind of show you part of it. You know, you might need to shorten it up sometimes. You might need to lengthen it up sometimes. In this case, I'm gonna shorten it a little bit more. Now it looks like it's this track is actually shifted a little bit that way for some strange reason. So 
as I said before, tedious is really the only way to put it. It can be tedious to do this, but it's totally worth it in the long run as you're able to create something that the game did not intend for you to create. And so the, I think the trickiest part when doing this is when you get to the point where you got to start banking. Um, that part can get a little bit tedious with it. So you might even want to shorten the track up a little bit. So I think that's a little bit too high above the track, so I'm going to kind of try to lower that down just a little bit. And we're not going to do too much of it, I'm just going to do finish around this turn. Because then you're going to have to go through and smooth the RMC track out because you don't want the RMC part of it to be rough. And sometimes kind of getting the right movement on the control can be tricky. Because I'm like, now which way do I go? I don't know why that's messing up. All right. So now I'm just going to go through and I'm going to smooth some of this out. And now this coaster model that we use for the actual coaster, it is tougher to hide than the bar heist one that I used. Um, so as you can see, you know, you see that part of the track, but I mean, most people aren't going to be looking for that. Most people aren't going to recognize it. You can also see some moments where the track might be on the side or on the edge, stuff like that. I mean, really, ultimately, it's up to what you can handle. Um, and so let's kind of look at an example of this coaster now. So let's take a... Oh, that's the brakes. Hold on. Um, oh yeah, here's another tricky thing as well. When you're trying to edit a coaster, you really can't click on it if the other coaster is being overlaid. Because you're trying to find that piece of track, and it is really, really difficult to find that piece of track. So there we go. So somehow I found that piece of track there, and let's turn this to drive tires instead. Because it looked like the coaster just completely stopped there. So let's see how this looks. There we go. So we have started making ourselves a launched RMC. And then let's see how this looks watching it from this view yeah I really I'm happy with how that turned out hey all almost all green stats for a tiny coaster but yeah so the process I was working on here you just do that all the way around it takes time there's no way to avoid that I think overlaying the track on this part took me about an hour and a half so um, it was very tedious. Some parts were annoying. But the other thing I want to point out here is you need to have an entrance kind of in mind or how you want your station in mind before you work on it or else it can get tedious. Because if, take this for example, I don't actually have to use that other one. Let's say, okay, so if I click on the, uh, the torque and let's say we want to edit, edit coaster. 
Well, it doesn't allow me to change the station because it's saying obstructed, right? If I want to place the exit, it's not allowing me to move the exit around at all. And for, for the longest time, I was trying to figure out why is this going on. The reason is because that RMC track is there, it's it's obstructing it. Even though if you look at even though if you look at my settings, where are they at? I've got all these on. Allows coasters to be placed through existing scenery. Allows rides to be placed through existing scenery or terrain. All these different ones are on. Um, can look at. I don't. I've never really looked at those. Um, I turn crash test dummies off, so you can see I've got all this stuff on. But that doesn't necessarily mean you can place coaster through coaster, right? So if I edit this, and I were to take these pieces right here and delete them and you know I might have to delete that one as well we'll see though so now I'm giving a little bit more so it still says obstruct and it's because of this coaster piece right here Wait, which one did I click on oh let's click on the wrong one <laughs> um, Oops, hold on. There we go. So now, because I've got this station kind of free, what I can do now is I can I can change it up. I can extend the station one way or another if I want to. I can now um, edit this coaster, and I can change the I can change which station type I want. Right. So you got to make sure you do that before you have the RMC track down there as a part of it, and then you can just edit the RMC track again say edit coaster so see how it started from that other side is changing the um, the side that the catwalks on so we want to make sure and do this take catwalk off and then here turn catwalk on and so forth so now we're back to where it was and then the reason why I like using this train is because I feel like it is the the one that resembles an RMC train the best. Because if we look at, so if I can try to keep that one in the background, if you look at the Iron Fury train, I mean it's got the side kind of protection area, you got the lap bars, uh, Malice Unchained, very similar lap bars there, and Steel Vengeance, similar lap bars. So that this coaster type looks the most, in my opinion, like the RMC trains. So then, as I said, you just continue this process around the rest of the ride, and voila. And then um, you can place you know, your exit path from there. You can do your entrance path. But why is it saying that this one's obstructed? Let me, let's do some research on that. Let me make sure on this one. You know what you might need to do? You might need to place that entrance path before you actually overlay the station part with the RMC train. That would be my guess. Um, but yeah, that's so that's it. I believe I've covered everything. If you have any other questions, um, please drop them in the comments below. Or if you've done this before and you have any other information that you want to share with the viewers and with me, feel free to let me know as I really appreciate all the feedback and support. And thank you guys so much and have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day.